Rhinos are one of the world's most endangered species. But how far should we go to protect them? We're inside India's greatest national park to discover its dark secret. Whenever you see the poachers or any people during night time, we are ordered to put foot them. The authorities are evicting villagers. There's no jury, there's no judge, there's no questioning. The park has killed, maimed, and it is alleged even tortured people. There's no question rhinos should be protected, but at what cost? This is the inside story of the Indian National Park and those killed in the name of conservation. This is Kaziranga National Park, one of the greatest wildlife reserves on Earth. The home to two-thirds of the world's population of Indian rhinos. So look at this. What a magnificent animal. They look just incredible, don't they? They look like uh, like tanks with those great folds of grey skin, like like armour plating. But actually, they're much more vulnerable than they look. The park is a huge attraction for tourists and wildlife enthusiasts. David Attenborough's team came here for Planet Earth 2. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge visited last year on their first tour of India. Kaziranga is an incredible story of conservation success. There were only a handful of rhinos left when the park was set up a century ago. Now there are more than 2,400. But Kaziranga's success has a dark side. This is the story they don't tell you on the glossy wildlife documentaries and tourists like William and Kate never hear about. So what is Kaziranga's untold secret? The tourists have gone, the park is closed and I have been invited on a night patrol. Walking in the forest in the dark is a dangerous business. Audesh, what are you looking for? Some animals are sitting here, might be. They may attack us. Yeah, here, here's a rhino. Oh, yes, yeah, there's a rhino just here. We are just us. here, you can see here. And he's, he's looking at us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The park is huge. More than 400 kilometers square, and there are around 1,200 park guards. It looks like this fellow had been in a scrap with another rhino. Luckily, it was in no mood to charge us. The guards are here to protect him from the most vicious predator there is, man. And for that, they have been given extraordinary powers. The instruction is there that whenever you see the poachers or hunters, you start our guns and hunt them. You shoot them? Uh, yeah. And you have orders to do that? Yeah, yeah. It's fully ordered to shoot them. Whenever you see the poachers or any people during night time, we are ordered to shoot them. Avdesh has shot at suspected poachers twice in his four years as a guard, but has never killed anyone. But he knows there are unlikely to be any consequences if he did. Lawyers say the powers he has are similar to those given to armed forces policing violent unrest. Yeah. Is this your, what do you call it? Yeah, yeah, this is known as Tongi. Tongi? Yeah. You used to sit here all night. The park says these powers are essential to fight poaching. 
but the discretion to shoot and kill is an incredible responsibility. It could so easily be abused. When I meet the director of the park, he gives me the official line on what critics call the park's shoot on sight policy. Uh, first, we have to warn them, who are you? Just to, uh, if they is a resort to firing, then we have to kill them. That's the this, this thing. First, we try to arrest them so that we get the information. What are their linkages? Who are others in the gang? So how many people have been killed in the last five years? If you allow me, I have the figures. So, okay. uh, this year, I have already told five number of uh, poachers have been killed. In the year 2015, 23 number of poachers were killed when the poaching was at the peak. And then uh, in the year 2014, 22 number of poachers were killed. Again in 2013, five number of poachers were killed. These are the figures. So hold on, that's, that's 50 people killed in the last three years. That's, that's quite a lot, isn't it? A large number of uh, communities are involved in the poaching, you can say. Uh, this is due to uh, rise in the prices of rhino horn and the interest in market. So uh, they are levering the local people. Still we have some information that around 300 plus suspected people are there who may be involved in the poaching. Kazaranga is the only park in India which uses these powers. Thank you very much. Thank but there are plans to roll them out elsewhere. So that was really interesting, but what surprises me is just how many people are being killed in the park. 50 people in the last three years. It seems like a lot of people. In the communities around the park, the rising death toll has become a major issue. Kazaranga is, like the rest of India, densely populated. This is one of many tribal communities that have lived in or alongside the forest for centuries. They say increasing numbers of innocent villagers are being shot. So look at this, this is the village road and just over here is the national park full of all those wild animals. There are no fences, no signs. And if I was to step across and into it, there is a real danger that I could be shot. Gaon Bora Keeling's parents believe their son mistakenly crossed into the park in December 2013. 25-year-old Gaon Bora had been looking after the family's two cows. His father believes the cows strayed into the park and his son, who had severe learning difficulties, went in to try and find them. My son was shot in the chest by park rangers. They also slashed his arm. I don't know whether they used an axe or something else. Kaziranga told the BBC guards shot Gaon Bora when he did not respond to a warning. He could barely do up his own trousers or his shoes. Everyone knew him in the area because he was so disabled. I haven't filed a court case. I am a poor man. I can't afford to take them on. I don't know anything about how the law works. What can I do? The park is under huge pressure to crack down on poaching. With 170,000 visitors, Kazaranga is by far the biggest tourist attraction in Assam. These economic benefits have made poaching a major political issue. So in 2013, when the number of rhinos killed more than doubled to 27, local politicians demanded action. The then head of the park was happy to oblige. Oh, Danny Avad, delicious, authentic Assamese cooking. And I've just been reading a report written by the former director of the park a couple of years ago, and it talks about his philosophy of how the park should be run. He says, anyone in the park, any suspect must obey or be killed. He says there should be no unauthorized entry whatsoever. 
kill the unwanted, he says. And then there's this interesting section where he talks about the justice system. He says environmental crimes, including poaching, are far more serious than murder. And the then part chief put his uncompromising doctrine into practice. The number of people killed started to rise. 22 in 2014, 23 the following year. And as the park's battle against poaching gathered intensity, there were to be other casualties. A jeep rushes in to the local hospital. Inside is a badly injured boy. Seven-year-old Akash Orang has been shot in the leg. I'm going to die, he cries. Don't worry, you won't die, you won't die, his mother says. I was just coming back from the shop. The forest guards were shouting, rhinoceros, rhinoceros. Then the forest guards suddenly shot me. The path to the shop runs alongside the national park. When I got to him, he was crying. I rushed to him. He was lying in a pool of blood. Dilip, what is the condition of the, of the wound now? They took muscle from here and they grafted it here. But it hasn't worked well. Just, just look at it. He's changed. He used to be cheerful. He isn't anymore. In the night, he wakes up in pain and he cries for his mother. Six months on and Akash can still barely walk. Now his brother has to carry him to school. The park says it was a terrible mistake. It paid Akash's medical expenses and $3,000 compensation. There was a huge outcry. Hundreds protested that the park doesn't do enough to control the guards. They say the deaths often aren't investigated thoroughly. Many victims are never identified, for example. Their bodies were found inside the national park. And the forest department has claimed that they were poachers, so they were found inside the national park and then they washed off their hands from those issues and never bothered to look back into it. This amount of impunity is dangerous because it's creating an animosity between the national park and the people living in the periphery. These guards are preparing an ambush in the park. They said it was too dangerous for us to join them. The park explains the high death toll, saying the poachers die in shootouts with guards. Firm figures are hard to come by, but according to the reports we can find, just one park guard has been killed by poachers in the last 20 years. Compared to the 106 people shot dead by guards over the same period. Well, the park is being run with, with utmost brutality. I mean, these are extrajudicial executions. There's no jury, there's no judge, there's no questioning. People are being killed in these encounters. And the, these are not just poachers, but they're also local tribal people. And the terrifying thing is that there are plans to roll out this shoot on site policy across the whole of India. <laughs> Three months on, and local people are protesting outside the park headquarters yet again. This time, the allegation is torture. They bring the victim in a pushcart. Monobora was picked up by forest guards and brought to the park headquarters, where he was accused of smuggling bullets for a poaching gang. He says the questioning was aggressive. Very aggressive. And with your hands tied here and your legs tied here? Uh -huh. They gave me an electric shock here on my knees and here on my elbows and here on my groin too. They kept on hitting me. I was tied up, so every time they hit me, I fell over. The officer said, keep on torturing him. Then he'll speak the truth. I kept on telling them, I'm not a poacher, so they kept on hitting me. 
He says the ordeal lasted for three hours until finally his interrogators became convinced they had the wrong man. Park officials called his village headman to pick him up. What the park did to Monobora is unacceptable. They had no evidence that he is a poacher. How can they justify torture? If we discovered that he is involved in poaching, we would take him to the park and expect him to be punished, even killed. But what they did is outrageous. Kaziranga says it did bring Monobora in for questioning, but categorically denies any harm came to him, adding it never uses electric shock during interrogation. But again, local people are saying it's evidence their rights are being trampled by the park and say activists, some of the world's biggest wildlife charities, have turned a blind eye. For example, WWF describes itself as a, a close partner of the Assam Forest Department who are carrying out these extrajudicial executions on a massive scale. They are, um, they've been providing equipment and funds to the Forest Department. Um, Survival has repeatedly asked them to speak out against, extra, against these, this shoot-on-site policy and extrajudicial executions, which they have so far failed to do. In the past, WWF has funded combat and ambush training for Kaziranga's guards, as well as providing specialist equipment, including night vision goggles. But what would you use night vision goggles well, for, for in anti-poaching? Well, for, for primarily two things. One is to monitor how the rhinos are doing, and also to monitor if, the, if there is any, any people uh, moving deep inside the park. It's quite likely those goggles have been used to target people who've subsequently been killed. And I wonder how WWF feels about providing equipment for a park that is killing that many people. Well, we have not come across any incident where the park has said that the goggles have been used for uh, spotting people. But to be honest, would they report that to you? I mean, well, would you know, they the thing is, they probably uh, wouldn't report that to you. Killing people, anybody, nobody is comfortable with killing people, right? Uh, what is needed is on-ground protection. This trade has to stop if the poaching has the, to the, stop. The, the illegal trade in, the illegal in rhino trade. horn. Yeah, so that has to stop if poaching has to stop. But shouldn't WWF speak out? Because obviously, mostly WWF is fund by, funded by individual donations. I mean, what do you think your donors would feel about WWF's involvement with a, with, a, with a park which is involved with killing dozens and dozens of people, with maiming people, with now there are allegations also of torturing people. Well, as I said, that we are working towards it. We want the whole thing to reduce. We don't want poaching to happen. And the idea is to reduce it with involving all the partners. It's not just the Kaziranga authorities, but also um, the enforcement agencies, also the local people. So I think the main thing is to work with the local people. And the bad news is, it isn't just the anti-poaching effort that threatens local people. You can see tigers in Kaziranga, but they are extremely elusive. It is easier in Ranthambore, in semi-arid Rajasthan. So they think they've seen a tiger down by the lake here. And we are going to go and try and find it now. So you've got to hold on tight. Whoa, go, 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 go. God. Sanjay. Oh. Stop, stop, stop. Oh my god, that's a brilliant sighting. That is incredible, a brilliant view of a tiger. It's gone. You can still see it. God, that was amazing. What a powerful, majestic animal. And it seemed utterly, utterly unconcerned about us. A hundred years ago, there were about 100,000 tigers in the world. Now, there are less than 4,000. But the good news is, numbers are rising. And success has brought new challenges. Big wild animals like tigers and rhinos need lots of space. To accommodate them, India is planning a massive expansion of its network of national parks. It's great news for conservation, 
but the plans involve more than 200,000 people being moved from their homes. And once again, Kaziranga is on the front line. The park wants to double in size and an eviction order has been issued. The problem is the villagers do not want to move. The first evictions happened in September. The police move in to clear the crowd. Scenes like this could be repeated across India as parks attempt to follow Kaziranga's example and expand. The crowd starts throwing stones. The police respond first with tear gas, then with live rounds. Two people were killed. I have no one. My husband was the only person I had. I wanted to take his body away, but they beat me up and didn't allow me to take his body. So I had to run away. Then they brought in diggers to destroy buildings. And the National Park provided a team of elephants that slowly and deliberately went through the village, knocking down every home. This is all that's left. India's wildlife reserves are sanctuaries for its most revered species. But it is in danger of testing to breaking point the faith of local communities. We requested interviews from India's environment minister, the minister of the environment for Assam, the head of the body that runs India's national parks, the chief forest officer for Assam, and for another interview with the head of Kaziranga. None of them were available to speak to us. We've heard how important it is to work with local communities, but we've seen evidence of innocent people tortured, crippled and killed in the name of protecting wildlife. Of course, endangered species need preserving, but is Kaziranga's approach to conservation placing the welfare of wildlife too far above the welfare of the people we are told are best placed to protect it?